Hi, this is Michael Adams for Stock Telegraph, and uh, it's my great pleasure today to have another uh, interesting company that I can present to you. It's, we're talking about Altair Resources. Um, it's trading on the tier 6 venture in the symbol is AVX. And actually, I was introduced to the company by one of my uh, fellow uh, friends and my, uh, another German newsletter writer who's very, very successful. Uh, he was uh, very successful a couple of years ago. and. and almost picked like the, the bottom of the resource market. So congratulations, Daniel Schad from uh, stockreport.de. And yeah, today we're talking to uh, John Gouguet. I, I know I mispronounced the name, I'm sorry. But um, yeah, he's chairman of the company. And um, the company just recently acquired a couple of projects in the lithium space, but also has some other projects in uh, zinc and gold, I think. So um, yeah, it's, I will, I, it will be my pleasure to really learn a little bit more about the company and uh, um, yeah, the, the potential. Um, yeah, if it's a potential good investment for um, my subscribers. <laughs> So thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, it has been pretty busy this month. Um, first of all, you changed your name from, or the company, not you. Uh, the company changed uh, the name from Altair Gold to, uh, sorry, Al yeah, Altair Gold to Altair Resources. And then you have been able to get your hands on a couple of uh, lithium projects, right? Yeah, it's been a busy um, a start. I, I came on board as chairman of the company on the 1st of May. And in that period of time, we have acquired five lithium properties, all highly prospective, one copper gold property in Peru, and we continue to have a, a stack here on the desk that we're continuing to review. Our intention is to become the dominant lithium uh, landholder in the Quebec Abitibi region. And why so, are you focusing on Quebec? Because as you know, yeah, most of these um, junior companies, they're all going to Tesla, like to Nevada. Yes, we have, I guess, a, a little different thought than most people in the lithium space. Um, if, you, if you understand where Tesla is, you'd be in Nevada. If you understand where Tesla's going, you'd be in Quebec. And not just Tesla. Uh, you've seen this week um, a Jill and Jin, the nickel company from China, step to the plate with a $200 plus million dollar investment in the Canada lithium um, processing facility knowing full well that they need to spend another 200 million to be able to debug that uh, project. I think that speaks very much about a pivot that has taken place in the lithium industry. If you look at the Tesla S3 you're going to need a tremendous density in the lithium ion batteries to be able to get further range in the car. The only way you can get the density is from higher quality lithium. If you know anything about the, the brine deposits, many, if not most, have suffered from residual magnesium content, which has caused some flare-ups. You saw it at the at turn of the year in the Christmas period when people were getting their skateboards with lithium-ion batteries and they would just spontaneously flash or ignite, and that was the lithium the magnesium content in the lithium that caused that. Mm. So our focus is on Quebec because it has hard rock lithium, it's more expensive to process, it is a more expensive to explore for, but it is higher quality, it is cleaner. That's the reason for the focus on Quebec. Okay, yeah, I, I'm familiar with another company out of the lithium space, and that's International Lithium, ILC on the venture. I'm not sure if you know them, but they have a couple of lithium projects around the world, and, and um, but also in um, Ontario. So they, they are focusing, they, it's kind of a, not a similar strategy. Yeah? They say they want to be not in Nevada, yeah, but they want to be where the lithium is, not where the, the end user is. And on the other hand, you have all the big car manufacturers, right? If we let's say we are not only talking about Tesla who might use the lithium for electronic vehicles it's also the other big three and and the other car makers and they are more all on the on the east coast like right? around the, the the big lakes Chicago that that's correct and international has a, a property that that is a neighbor of one of our properties so okay okay so you're familiar with that company okay cool um, B vaguely 
Okay. Yeah. So, do you, um, uh, Daniel? You can you can ask uh, questions whenever you would like to. Um, otherwise, yeah, sure. I would just suggest that you start going through the presentation, John. My pleasure. But yeah, yeah, John. Um, thanks uh, for taking the time uh, talking to us. And um, I think Altair is a quite a, a fresh company um, going into the, the lithium business. And I'm uh, yeah, I'm happy to to uh, talk to you and um, getting some new information from directly from from the company so um, yeah just uh, give us an overview about um, about the company and maybe of also about uh, your personal background that would be great thank you thanks for the uh, opportunity Daniel uh, first of all as you can tell from the video I've been around this world for a long time I'm not quite as old as dirt and and rocks but I've I've been in the mining industry with my first a mining venture uh, helping out on a molybdenum mine in, in a, a Fraser Lake uh, for Placer. It was uh, the Indaco molybdenum mine in 1963. Okay. I, uh, I spent a fair amount of my time working with Placer. Uh, I was working in a company called Commonwealth Atkinson. I went on for 33 and a half years in that company the last 10 years as president and finally as managing director of the holding company in my time there we put 86 major mines together 27 of them were for Placer and I had the privilege of being involved in 21 of them myself uh, since that time I've been uh, playing more golf uh, focused on the gold mining business I, uh, I also have a little venture company putting together a 350 ton per day a gold processing plant, very high grade, um, in the uh, mountains of Peru. Okay. But in terms of Altair, Altair is a new company. Essentially, it struggled for many years. Um, it found itself with a, a new board, a new management team, last year, headed by uh, Zahir Danani, and they found what I believe will be a very high grade, uh, a zinc project. In Kosovo, uh, we were able to file a 43101 report as a property of merit in February of this year. It was accepted for filing, and uh, I joined the board in February. And we uh, took a serious look at where the company was, where it was going, and while we have great faith in the lead zinc business because the fundamentals are only improving. We also knew that the lithium business was a brand new opportunity. Uh, I know it's had some false starts previously, and we've been skeptical as, a, as an industry about lithium. But lithium is here today to stay. The world finally is united on climate change as being an issue that we have to solve, as one planet that we need to save, and lithium is part of that solution. So, um, I'd like to walk you through uh, what we've been able to accomplish since the 1st of May. Uh, it won't take but a few moments. Okay. We have in Altair a new management team. We have new projects. We have a new focus on lithium in Quebec. We've just kicked off the work programs on our Kosovo a zinc project. And we believe the future <coughs> is bright for the shareholders and the resources that we're dealing in. We believe seriously in discovery through drill bit. As long as we can get to early production and start to generate cash flow. But just that is too slow. As you know, this industry has struggled for funding and we have not been able to have the venture capital that high cost exploration requires. We have been fortunate enough to have market appreciation of our stock, been able to use our stock as our currency, and with that we have managed to make several acquisitions totaling greater than 21,000 hectares in the Abitibi region of Quebec. So we intend to continue to focus shareholder value as the priority for the management team and the acquisition of highly prospective mineral properties, timely investigation of the potential behind those acquisitions, are very much a part of our strategy. 
we have been able to move quickly and we will continue to move quickly to secure the right opportunities within the context of future value to be realized. We are not buying mature uh, projects. We have strengthened the board and we will continue to strengthen the board and we have started to bring in a very experienced advisory board. I would point out uh, that the management uh, previously has uh, very strong relations uh, with uh, Chinese exploration firms and have partnered in other projects. We're very pleased to have Mr. Jeffrey Zhao on the board. He's a strong financial advisor from Beijing. Uh, we have been able to date to honor the input from our shareholders. You can't believe how important it is to closely work with them. It, these are very, still very tight uh, venture uh, funding markets and our shareholders have proven to be very, very supportive. Uh, to our stakeholders, we owe them ethical treatment and to our environment, we have nothing but sustainable practices. Our logo today will start to reflect our mantra, which is uh, think green, think growth. Okay, um, as far as I know, John, the um the, the political situation and the for, for mining in Quebec is very positive yeah, as far as I understand it um, but can you can you elaborate a little bit about the situation with the First Nations in your area um, I think they're the part of the stakeholders that we refer to uh, Quebec as a province is one of the better mining jurisdictions in the world it has a tremendous incentives for flow throughs and and you have to incorporate by the indigenous people in your programs. As, as simple as I can say it, we don't view them as any different than any other Canadian. Um, I think in fact it would be um, wrong-footed to uh, begin a program where you are isolating the indigenous people. What you have to do is incorporate them. We don't have any, any form of discrimination uh, because of where you were born or how you were born or what language you speak. Okay, cool. I'd just like to quickly run through the the new management team. Uh, uh, Robert Nasso is the uh, existing uh, CEO of the company and he is based in uh, in Kosovo in charge of our zinc uh, project. Uh, Dr. Aylan uh, Sesen asks you as in fact the person who found the uh, zinc project. Mr. Nick DeMere as corporate secretary I asked to uh, join the board and uh, we are continuing to encourage Nick to take on the role of the chief financial officer. He has uh, a period of time to be able to respond on that. If he does, uh, great. If he doesn't, we'll bring a new one in place. Uh, Zahir Danani was the founder of the uh, current uh, version of, of uh, Altair and um, on the 1st of May moved into the advisory board and chairs that for us. Dr. Abu Tahiri is a, a billionaire from Vancouver in the property to bu a business but he has a, a PhD in industrial management and environmental engineering and Dr. Jeffrey Zhao I referred to earlier as a financial manager out of uh, Beijing. Okay. Our focus right now although we could have a little dot on the map here for Peru that hasn't been finalized with the exchange yet so that uh, acquisition is still technically pending so we only show today the uh, the focus we have on the lithium business in Peru and the presence of our uh, a zinc project in uh, Kosovo. I'd like to focus first of all on the Quebec uh, lithium projects. I would uh, say that yesterday's news included the the Altair East project uh, that's virtually neighboring on uh, international lithium you were talking about earlier it's in between the uh, Bouvier and the international lithium properties okay. our first acquisition was White Hills it's a 4,000 um, hectare uh, property and then the uh, Aquino then Mathers uh, Telia and uh, finally yesterday East Altia, I would say we had many opportunities to acquire properties in Nevada 
but chose the hard rock somewhat more difficult to explore somewhat more difficult to process but cleaner uh, lithium deposits I'd like to look at each one just briefly yeah, sure. the White Hills lithium uh, property uh, you'll be able to pick it up on the maps but they're all in the Abitibi region of Quebec this is represents 4,000 hectares of continuous claims it hasn't had any geological work done on it to any extent since the 50s uh, lithium has uh, as you know historically been uh, used in the medical industry and uh, it's only recently started to find its legs when I say recently in the last 20 years but some of the great minds of the world have not addressed the role of lithium in the new emerging industrial world so this is right in the heart of the lithium trends if you look at the, the magnetic sport it's a low uh, resonance a very very prospective property uh, rich in spodamine mineralization with uh, granitic intrusions and pegmatite dikes our main targets here will be all the lithium rich, rich pegmatites similarly the John, just a yes question. Um, certainly for all, for, for all the five projects there, there I'm pretty sure there was any um, historical work do you have all the historical data that um, that's available for that um, project we don't have it all in our possession yet Danielle but we have uh, some of it and it is proving highly highly encouraging I'll, uh, I'll use an example of that when we get to the Mathers uh, property okay. uh, here in the Kino lithium property again Abitibi region another 2139 hectares uh, surrounded by lithium rich properties highly prospective spodamine mineralization and pegmatite dikes main targets lithium rich pegmatites here's Mathers this is the biggest acquisition we did in terms of land area 12,290 hectares contiguous claims cuts like a lightning bolt right through the heart of the lithium um, rich areas the uh, Namaska deposits the Wabauchi deposits it's surrounded by lithium rich properties and here we have been able to draw on some of the historic information that is available in the Quebec geological database uh, as you can tell we've been busy with acquisitions <coughs> we have had people in the Quebec database but we continue to research it we've managed to pull up I'm going to guess 1200 pages of data so far and we find it very encouraging in the lithium space one percent grade is uh, perhaps common in this zone some grades uh, up to two percent here on this property we found a zone it's not continuous through the entire property but we found a zone that graded up to 7.6 percent uh, three drill holes a 6.4 uh, 6.8 and 7.6 percent okay uh, John, this also had sorry go ahead go on okay uh, this is from actual drill holes not just from uh, grab samples that's that's from real drill holes right this this is uh, the 7.6 yeah. is a surface sample and the other two were drilling the other okay, two so were drilling so the highest the highest grade from drilling was 6.4 that's correct wow okay and I, 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 yes, I, I, uh, I'm going to say I have a very healthy degree of skepticism in me uh, when we when we talk about uh, a spot grade because what you have to be able to do is to pr prove continuity to be able to produce commercially. So please don't take it as anything other than encouragement as a good place for us to start and a place to target our efforts. I'm not trying to trying to get ahead of ourselves uh, we are we are early days these are prospective properties but the historic work done in the 50s has proven to be very very helpful in the selection of our properties okay. John do you have any more the, projects that you want to acquire 
Is there more projects coming down the road or are you now going to focus to kind of develop the projects and explore the projects? I think the answer to both your questions is yes, Michael. Um, we continuously look at projects. In my background, my previous life, I, I participated in the development of over 300 feasibility studies. So it's something that our team is good at. Um, I've been able to bring some of the technical people uh, from my uh, previous uh, life experiences uh, to bear on what we are doing or trying to accomplish here in Altair. And so uh, we were able to very quickly uh, review if something matches up with our criteria. I hope here I'm, I'm on the, the Tilia lithium property, another 2,000 hectares. Uh, again, very, very similar um, characteristics. Main targets, lithium-rich pegmatites. All of this is granitic intrusives and uh, carries barrel and many rare earth minerals and I, I mention that because we have been able to have initial partnering discussions with a number of very fine technical people currently in the lithium space in the province of Quebec. I think that will be a premium uh, for uh, people working in the lithium space. There just aren't that many people to go around so I feel very fortunate that we've been able to make those early connections. Okay. The east, this is a poor map to try to look at in, in this format, but right. uh, this, this shows virtually all of the players in the lithium space in the Abitibi region of Quebec. And this is our last, most recent uh, acquisition. This is the Alte East uh, a project of 535 hectares of contiguous uh, claims on strike with the Altier deposit. And the Altier deposit sold last month to Savona. I believe the uh, Savona mining people are closing uh, the, uh, the financing and the acquisition for this purchase somewhere before the 21st of July. And just for comparisons, we bought this for $460,000 in stock value and uh, Savona paid uh, four million dollars for the neighboring property. They're on the same strike, the same targets, the same quality, the same grades. Uh, Glen Eagles has a very good preliminary economic assessment that they've done and if someone is interested they can look it up on Glen Eagles site. It's a, it's a full blown feasibility with all the economic consequences this is next door. Okay. Uh, I'd like to talk for a moment about what caused the lithium boom in our way of thinking. It's certainly for us a very green mineral. Uh, mining industry and being green have not necessarily gotten along very well. Uh, certainly by perceptions in the past but today that is changing. The lithium uh, mineralization has been around. It's common in the world, but it is, uh, tends to be uh, contaminated with magnesium. And magnesium uh, is the enemy of the electrical system because of its ability to flash. So you'll see that the range of vehicles the, the, the Tesla vehicles that we saw to begin with or all the electric vehicles we saw, whether it's the Volt from General Motors or the, the Leaf or the, the Mitsubishi entries, were all very limited in their range. And the reason for that is the, the density of the lithium. Lithium is only about 2% of a battery, so it's not... Uh, a difficult component to pay for. It's, it's not having a negative effect on battery industry, but it has a huge effect on the ability to have range. How far, how long a charge will last is directly in proportion to the quality and the density of the lithium. So when I say here the Tesla effect is still early days, 
I, I really believe that. People think that Tesla's defined the market, and that is not the case. Uh, Tesla's a big driver in the market, uh, but Tesla's also going to move the market. It's It's got uh, an abundance of new technical applications that will show themselves in the S3 model. Uh, China, China, uh, as you know, through their CIDIC group in early May, uh, purchased a 35% stake in the Solara deposit in Chile. Um, and I think that's very telling. That was a brine deposit. And yet, this month, last week, they purchased the Canada Lithium Assets from RB Energy in Quebec. I think they know they have to be in the quality game. Okay. <coughs> Just talking about factors in terms of why is there a boom? The Ontario government, just this small province in Canada, has put in a, a fund to subsidize and motivate consumers with initially a three billion dollar fund to convert to electric cars. That's just here in Canada in the province of Ontario. We'll see that I'm sure in many other jurisdictions. Uh, the solar panel industry is starting to get the benefits of lithium efficiencies and the quality components of lithium. Uh, I talked about lithium being only 2% of the cost of a, of a lithium ion battery, nickel being a, a bigger component by far. So the, the thought is that, that, that the current pricing of lithium uh, could change based on the dynamics of supply and demand and particularly the dynamics of quality. Um, here we said, is, is Quebec lithium the new Athabasca? Uh, there's a number of people that are calling the Abitibi region of Quebec the new Athabasca. That lithium is to Abitibi what heavy oil is to Athabasca. We're going to reserve judgment on that for a while, but we certainly like the fundamental ingredients that are in the lithium space in Quebec. I talked about the battery the quality issues, the residual magnesium content causing spontaneous ignition. Uh, we saw that uh, with the, you can't take your, your lithium ion batteries on an airplane in the December, January of this year. And that was the spontaneous ignition problems. And the brine based lithium deposits have been plagued by residual magnesium content. Now there is a way to try to flush that and that's why combining it with sodium carbonate but when you do that you still have a residual effect and the battery manufacturers are now in a position to pivot into um, a much more expensive but cleaner uh, lithium okay. deposits. Okay. This slide is just a, a thought from myself that the world is starting, and I mean only starting, to respond to the fears of climate change on a global basis. I think in Europe you've been on that issue in front of the curve for some time, but the rest of the world, and, and I mean China, Korea, Japan, the subcontinent, India, uh, the rest of the world is now starting to respond to the fears of climate change and not since the invention of money in my opinion has there been such a universal unifying issue and lithium appears to be one of the central solutions. Okay. Hey, um, John, thank you for bringing us um, uh, some uh, more detailed infos about uh, the five lithium projects you just acquired and I'm just wondering um, on what projects you will um, focus first when, when you are doing your work programs, your exploration programs. We're going to focus on... Sorry, because I think you, you can't do uh, work on, on all five projects at the same time, right? If we were limited in resources, 
and had to set a pecking order, we would follow the high grade first, Daniel. So it would be but the metal silicium first. That's cor that's correct. But that's a big slice. That's twelve. Yeah. That's yeah. twelve thousand uh, hectares. That's n that's not a small area. Yeah, um, we we have uh, some partnering with uh, Quebec-based firms that we believe will allow us to continue prospecting, continue the uh, electromagnetic work and start some initial work programs. We have recently announced a, a million dollar private placement and I must say we have had many offers for flow through funding in the 120% uh, of market price range. Uh, the Quebec government provides great tax incentives and uh, we intend to fully uh, bring those values into our shareholder group. Okay. So John, um, what's your cash position right now if you include um, the latest announced private placement? Um, well we've been aggressively using our funds. Uh, we've got a, a work program going in Kosovo and we intend to have five work programs going in Quebec very shortly. So the a million dollars that we have announced and we have uh, most of it committed to. Uh, we've had a, a about a half a million dollar uh, loan advanced to us uh, from an activist shareholder a group and uh, cash is adequate although we will top up the treasury as uh, results come in. We intend to uh, do at least a half a million dollar a flow through uh, financing before the summer is concluded. Uh, we would like to get started on the work programs in Quebec in July if possible and the indications to us for the availability of flow through funds have been there almost instantaneously available to us. Okay, and um, you talked about um, yeah, the, the interest from the investment community when it comes to um, yeah, low through, um, financing and what do you think about the, the overall sentiment for right now for raising money? Is it, is it easy or difficult? I think it continues to be difficult although we have uh, been exceptionally fortunate. It's, it seems as though we have been able to tap into a, a shareholder group that uh, likes our new approach, that likes our new management team and uh, uh, likes the move into the lithium space. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we bring some balance. Uh, we not only have lithium, but we have uh, what, what people think is sort of a boring old commodity in zinc. But I would say to you that over the last half decade there's been many uh, previous large producing zinc properties that have run out of ore and stopped producing. And the fundamentals surrounding zinc have also brought a tremendous uh, market appreciation to it. If you look at the uh, the metals inventories in London, uh, uh, zinc has been working off uh, historically high levels to now they're down to two three weeks supply. Uh, zinc year to date has improved by about 30 percent. It's been the top performing industrial metal uh, so far this year. So that brings some balance to the portfolio. And I mentioned and won't talk about it too much, but the acquisition in Peru of the uh, Lejin property is a uh, copper gold property that also will bring value and stability uh, in addition to the lithium assets uh, to Altair. Now that's a 900 uh, hectare property that cuts like a lightning bolt through the middle of HUD Bay's 1.7 billion dollar Constancia project. Uh, so we're we're familiar with the property, have been familiar with it for some time. Some of your readers or, or investors know that property in its original form as the, the Norsemont uh, project and uh, we have been able to uh, to uh, to secure that for again what I believe is a very reasonable uh, cost to our shareholders. Okay. So I, I think stability is, is a big thing that we bring and the market is recognizing we're not just a one-trick pony.
Okay. John, before we go into more details of the Zinc project, um, can you give me your two cents about Kosovo in general? And the reason why I'm asking is that I think a lot of Europeans, and that might not affect the North American crop, but a lot of Europeans, they think of Kosovo being like an unstable country, uh, which might be dangerous to be to work in because it was just, it's a young country, right? It was just put together. Um, and. So uh, I, I was recently talking to Avrupa Minerals, and they also have a, a project in Kosovo, the Slivovo Gold project. So what's, what's your feeling about the situation for mining in Kosovo in general? Um, well, I don't want to come across as an expert on Kosovo, because I surely am not. Okay. It's, a, it, it's a, um, a new country, as you say. It has growth pains. As, uh, as to be expected, but I don't know the gold industry in Kosovo, but I can tell you that the Trepcha mine, uh, which is a neighboring property to our deposit, uh, was the source of zinc for the entire uh, Union of Soviet Socialists. It, uh, it had tremendous production year over year at 15% zinc, at one point it employed 23,000 people. That's 4 or 5% of those employment levels are what exist today. Okay. The, the political um, climate in Kosovo, I'm going to say, is suffering from growth, uh, suffering from newness, but also fueled by a great sense of the future. Um, we have had tremendous relationships with the government there. They are a little heavy on the tax uh, side of things. Um, I think that's just part of the breaking away from the Soviet control. They, they, they tend to tax you twice a month and you have to have all of your accounts in perfect shape. Uh, but we, we are doing things properly and we intend to do things uh, properly. We've been able to put together a team of people who uh, are well experienced because of the Trepcha experience. Uh, we've been able to retain the geologists who actually wrote the book on the uh, geology of Kosovo and uh, we've managed to find some uh, very high grade uh, zinc in a zone that previously was not explored. Uh, we found some foldings and uh, we like the minerals. Now, uh, will, to get back to your question, will the political climate uh, become a detriment? We don't see that. Uh, we see the political climate as wanting to succeed. We see that Kosovo is wanting to demonstrate to the world that they're a good place to do business. And th certainly the people have been ethical, they've been open, they've been transparent and they've been willing to listen as well as uh, we have been willing to listen to them. So I, I, I think the ingredients are there for success and uh, you know these are early days we've only just started our work program we tried to get started in, in May but we had some outstanding rains and, uh, and had to postpone the trenching programs and, until just uh, this week so um, we look forward to, to uh, to Kosovo as a new nation and a new opportunity. Okay, thanks. Uh, just very quickly, uh, uh, what we're looking at in, in Kosovo is uh, a, an initial zone that we found that's five kilometers long, open to the south, uh, ranging from 200 to 500 meters in width and down to about 400 meters in depth. It may go beyond that. We haven't done any testing uh, beyond that point. But we were able to benefit from the historical work done in the area and from previous people that have had looked at it. But the zone that we're in has never been explored before. Uh, we had done work to do some verification on work done by Lydian in the 207-208 uh, period and I, I must say this was the project that got me to come into the company to begin with. I did a little bit of uh, technical work on it for them and uh, what I found was uh, a number of samples that had not been 
taken to their over limits so I immediately had them set off and, and assayed and that's where these high grade uh, 38 to 40 percent uh, samples came through. That's only four samples and again I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I know I got uh, calls from all over when I uh, put that news release out. Uh, people thought we were going to be direct shipping. People thought we were going to be partnering with some a major a European uh, zinc producers because of their shortfall in mineral supply. Uh, and as much as uh, we would like to say yes to those things, it's just too early to do that. Uh, we have a process that we have to go through and uh, our work programs are going to determine what we have. Historically the zone has produced 15% lead and 5% excuse me, 15% zinc and 5% lead with some silver credits. Um, we found a, a new folded zone that uh, appears to be much higher than that but the actual work will tell us what we have. So it's, it's early days at the Kosovo Zinc project, it's early days in the lithium project, but it's a good time to get to know Altair. Okay, well, John, so the work uh, program um, at your um, Zinc project in Kosovo has just started and what do you think when can we see first results? I, I think we'll see some uh, trenching results, Daniel, uh, probably uh, by this time in July and then we'll see some uh, drilling results probably uh, uh, by mid to end of September. Okay, sounds good. We have the drilling contractors lined up. Uh, there, there are some people there, although they are not necessarily modern and we'll have to look whether or not we will will address that issue or will they be adequate for, for what our requirements are. Okay, looking at the share capital and uh, that's just on this uh, slide here, um, that looks pretty much okay but the warrants, um, can you tell me like what's the average um, exercise price for the warrants or what's the levels for exercise? Uh, there's, there is a, a few hundred in there at a dollar fifty but the the vast majority of those are at seven cents. Seven, okay. Seven. Yes. And they result from a, a placement that you did in the past or who's, hold, who's holding most the, of the, the stock and the warrants? The original shareholders of Altair and that goes back into the the second and third quarters of 2015. Okay. Uh, the options are at forty cents uh, they have just been set today so I've anticipated um, that those options of being a part of our shareholder base just trying to be up to date. And you don't often see people showing shares pending issue for exchange approval but that gives you a, a full look. I think if you look at the holdings, the number of projects and the costs of acquisition uh, that the assets in Altair at this point are very justifiable of the shares that are issued and outstanding and the fully diluted number as well. Yeah. Is there for the warrants or is there something like an acceleration clause or something? I'm just asking because you know if you have an exercise price of seven cents and the stock is trading I don't know where it's trading today but it's trading way higher right so usually what the yeah usually at least part of it is exercised. Yes, we anticipate that, that the shareholders will exercise their warrants. Uh, so far the shareholders have been pretty patient people. Um, I don't think you've seen a flood of them. Uh, our stock price had been higher. Uh, we anticipated it would come down as uh, we issued free trading shares uh, to the prospectors for some of our acquisitions right. and we think that brought the market uh, down a little. Um, the market is going to be what the market is and that's determined by the shareholders and certainly not by my opinions but I, I would trust that the shareholders will see the value in the company and that patients will continue to be part of their portfolio. Okay. No, and you, of course you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's just that Daniel and myself, we, we also deal with a lot of Canadians for, for years and that's just the usual situation. Yes, as, as, as long as they're in the money, yeah, that's a lot of people just exercising it and, and the brokers, yeah, they just put 
this money to work in a new private placement, making more commissions, right? You know how that works, and I don't have to tell you. So it's kind of interesting to see that the warrants are deep in the money, but still have not been exercised, which to me indicates, as you said, that you have a really uh, strong uh, a shareholder base that really believes in the success of in the company. We don't have a huge shareholder base. We have, I'm going to say, a patient shareholder base was one of the the uh, discussions I had before joining the board was with uh, um, half a dozen of the principal shareholders is that if they weren't patient uh, then we wouldn't have an opportunity to build a company and I anticipate uh, that they will continue to support the company and their patience is very much part of that support. Okay. Daniel? Anything else or? No, no, I don't think that I have any. Okay, so ma yeah, maybe, uh, maybe to. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, uh, go. I have a question. Um, I know that the gold and copper project in Peru is not in the in your slide, but um, you mentioned it, and I think it's very interesting because of the location directly in um, in uh, hard base Contancia mine. So it's it's not it's not just a project; it's an um, active mine. So. What are your plans for that project? The same thing. I, uh, I have a team of geologists on the ground in Peru and as soon as we get exchange confirmation uh, we will go in there with an active uh, work program. We'll probably spend between one hundred and fifty and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars this year on drilling. Um, we fortunately our people know the project and uh, we've benefited from the results that HUD Bay have had on three sides of us. So there's a, a lot of geological information. The targeting should be a relatively uh, refined at this point. Okay, and John, what do you think will be the biggest challenges for, for your company in the coming weeks and months? Well, we've started at quite a breakneck pace, so I don't think we can keep that up. Uh, what we have to do now is is to continue to have patience from our shareholders and to uh, produce the type of information uh, that will allow us to define the value, uh, the real value in the acquisitions that we've made. Uh, that's going to be a slower pace over the next uh, three to six months. But I anticipate that before this calendar year is over we will have a, a reasonably good definition on the lithium space and uh, and certainly on the zinc property in Kosovo. With luck, the same for the Peruvian property. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so John, thank you very much for taking the time. I think that was a really good um, overview um, and there's more information available on the website, which you can see here. Um, John, are you the right uh, the right person to talk to if an investor wants to be in personal contact with uh, someone from the company or? Who should he contact? Yes, for now I'm I'm certainly the right person. Uh, okay. Our our CEO is is devoted to the Kosovo Zinc project, and I'm uh, looking after the balance of it. And I would point out that uh, with luck, uh, we have a roadshow planned for Germany and Switzerland for the uh, the middle part of July and perhaps we'll get an opportunity to meet oh. with some of your folks then. Oh, okay, yeah, perfect. Okay, yeah, if, if there's some interest um, from, let's say, my subscribers or maybe also from Daniel's subscribers, uh, just contact us individually on email and then we might be able to set something up um, that you can meet up with uh, with John or, and the team. Okay, so for now, thank you very much. Um, I will continue to, to watch the company. I'm pretty sure that Daniel is also going to continue the company. I think it's a very, a very, very interesting situation. You're having, on the one hand, you have Europe, you have zinc and lead, and then you have five um, lithium projects, even if they're like kind of early stage, and there needs to be a lot of work that needs to be done, but, but it's in a highly prospective area. I learned a lot about um, the difference between uh, brine, yeah, which a lot of companies are focusing on right now, and compared to hard rock, especially I wasn't aware of this magnesium uh, topic, yeah, that you have to be aware of the magnesium. Um, so again, thank you very much for educating us, John, and um, yeah, have a great weekend and uh, good luck for your further endeavors. 
Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. I look forward to meeting you in person in the not too distant future.